Hello and welcome to the AMA. So I'm going to answer the questions that you have posted in the previous video. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first question is, uh, you look like Jackie Chan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Justin Muslim people, what they are wearing when they are underwater and when they are in the beach. Uh, okay, so this is a very interesting question. Um, I have seen uh, Muslim people swim in public pools and they wear basically whatever attire that they want and it, it works for them. So I don't really see a problem with uh, whatever it is that you're wearing to the pool. I mean, you can wear a Speedo if you're comfortable wearing that or you can wear a t-shirt and like, uh, yeah, leggings if you want. Uh, just keep in mind that the more layers that you do put on, the more it will slow down your swimming, particularly if you're doing lap swimming, okay? So obviously, if I'm going to do like 500 meter laps, I'm not going to wear a cotton t-shirt. No, I'm just going to try to wear uh, jammers, which is what I recommend guys wearing. However, if you want to cover up your body, yeah, go for it. There's no shame in that. Nobody cares. Uh, Victoria says, hi, and where are you from? Uh, I am from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, born and raised here. But if you're wondering about this, <laughs> my mom is from Korea and my dad is from Hong Kong. Okay, so there you go. Do you not do any more guitar videos anymore? Okay, that's a good question. Okay, so uh, I probably would make more guitar videos, but on a different YouTube channel. Okay, so this is a, a hard lesson that I've learned about YouTube, okay? And if you are a YouTuber, you'll probably know this lesson as well. Do not mix your niches up, okay? Nobody wants to eat at a McDonald's and buy a Louis Vuitton bag at the same store, okay? Just doesn't happen, okay? So I try to make one YouTube channel based on all the things that I, I like doing, and that includes, you know, guitar, speaking Korean, swimming, fitness, and all that. It just doesn't work at the end of the day because you're just really alienating these audi different audiences. Okay, so uh, to answer your question, I would probably make more guitar videos uh, on a separate channel. So if I have time, yeah, I'll probably do that. But uh, I have a guitar playlist that you can check out. The links are down below. Okay, so you can, those videos are still up. They're just unlisted, okay? but. I'll leave the link down below for you to check out. Next question, uh, is it dangerous to dive in deep water like 11 feet and expel most of your air through your nose? Um, 11 feet? Here's, here's my take on diving. Dive when it's appropriate. So if you're doing lap swimming, you don't need to dive into the water. I mean, it's, it's just, unless you're at a, at a race and competing, yeah. But most of the time, I just sit on the ledge and I slowly slip in to the water. Whether it's in the shallow end or the deep end, I slowly slip in because there are usually other people swimming in your lane, you're sharing a lane with, and you might not see them. They might be underneath the water. Maybe there's kids playing down below in the deep, deep end at the bottom. You might not see them. They're coming up and then you dive in, you spear right into them. Accidents like that happen. I've seen that you know, time and again, like near end crashes happening all the time. So. If you are like an Olympic diver, or if you're going off a diving board, or wherever it's appropriate to dive, yeah, go for it. But for lap swimming, it's not necessary. How can I make swimming more fun for my brother? I swim daily and would like to take him too, but he doesn't find lane swimming enjoyable. That's a good question. That's kind of like saying, how do I make the gym more enjoyable since I've been going to the gym so many years and I'm doing the same exercises and it's really boring? The answer to that is try different things out. I mean, you're not just limited to dumbbells and barbells at your local gym. You can try so many other things out. And the same thing goes with the pool. I mean, you don't have to just stick to just doing lap swimming throughout your entire session. So here's what I do to mix things up. I am slowly getting into Olympic diving, okay? It's a fun fact. I mean, what I do is I do my, my work, you know, I do my sets. And after that, uh, I go to the, the diving boards and I just practice. And it's nothing like 
crazy. It's just basics, right? You just got to drill it into your, your body thousands and thousands of times so you get used to it. The same thing goes with learning strokes, okay? So I'm, I'm learning uh, Olympic diving, but you know, you can try so many other things. I mean, you can hang out in the sauna and just test your, your endurance, like sitting in a sauna. How long can you endure one, one go at a sauna? You can try water polo. You can try, I don't know, there's, there's so many other, I don't know, sports and like sub niches when it comes to being in water. And scuba diving is another one. So there you go. Just find something that's related to being in water and just play with it. When I started to learn swimming, I found your channel. It was like three years ago. I learned so much from your videos. I love swimming, but like everything, it's slowly worn off me because I live in a place where there are no pools. A place to swim. I have to go far a bit and I lost the fun from swimming. Hope to get it one day. Okay, um, yeah, I can totally relate. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, if you really want to swim, try to motivate yourself to get out there, go out there, okay? So here's another thing related to the previous question. How do I make swimming more enjoyable? Try different pools out, okay? You know, carpool with a friend or a family member and try out different pools in your neighborhood and beyond. Okay, I, that's what I like to do. I like to mix things up. I don't stick to just one pool. I like to venture out, you know, you know and try out this pool, that pool, whatever. And that, that, make, that makes things more interesting for me. Okay, so yeah, just carpool or find a friend or join a, a swim group or club. Okay, there are like, for example, like a uh, like tiny little like swim meetups for adults it's late in the evenings at my local pool and they probably have like you know things like that going on in your community center so just uh, look look it up and see what they have my question is how do people swim without goggles and a swim cap I just swim I tried to open my eyes underwater and swim without a cap and I couldn't do it thanks again for everything um, those people that swim without goggles or swim cap I think they're just doing it for fun you know they just like play around in the pool and then they, they don't really lap swim continuously like I do okay if you're going to be a lap swimmer you need the proper gear and that includes good goggles and a swim cap however if you're just playing around then you don't need that stuff so for example in Olympic diving we don't wear goggles or a swim cap why because I learned this hard, the hard way. When you dive into the water, like head first, the speed is so fast that, you know, the material, your, your goggles will fly off your face and your swim cap will rip to pieces. That's how fast the impact of the water is. So I lost, you know, a good pair of goggles and swim caps because of that. I learned it the hard way. So you don't need to wear that stuff depending on what you're doing in the water. Okay, so, and if you do want to like play around in the water with your eyes open, just be aware that that water is chlorinated, okay? So that chlorine powder is going to dry and stick to your eyeballs at the end of the session. So make sure you, you properly rinse your eyes out if you're going to do that without goggles, okay? Uh, next question, what's the furthest you ever swam in one session? Open water and pool. Furthest, uh, I don't really count or measure the distance that I swim. I just swim and then when I'm tired or bored or I just feel like stopping, I stop. It's kind of like um, like Forrest Gump, you know, like Forrest Gump when he, he ran at the end of the movie, right? He just ran. And then one, all of a sudden one day he just said, I'm tired, I want to go home now. That's, that's how I feel after a session and swimming in the water. When you swim, the, the numbers just just blur everything just you're in the zone okay you can try to count your laps if you want in your head I, I've done it before I count in my head lap one lap 22 lap 23 in my head yeah but most of the time I just daydream when I'm doing laps it's like I don't know how, to, how I can explain it you're just in the zone so my brain is just wandering when I'm swimming like my body's swimming but my brain is my mind is elsewhere daydreaming that's that's how I enjoy swimming I know other people they want to be analytical and they want to measure everything quantify everything 
you know, that if you want to do that, go ahead. But for me, that's that's not enjoyable. If I had a friend, yeah, I would get that friend to sit at the pool and just count my strokes for me so I don't have to do it. Or you can just wear a digital timer and all that, Apple Watch and all that, if you want. But it's not necessary. Distance for a beginner, intermediate swimmer for fitness. Meters or yards for daily swimming. If you're doing 750 to 1,000 meters of lap swimming per session, yeah, that, that's pretty good. That's To me, in my, my head, that's just basically two sets of 500 meters. So if you're, if you're at home, you're figuring, trying to figure that out. Uh, that's basically, if you're in a 25 meter pool, you swim 20 laps back and forth, whatever stroke you want. Usually it's front crawl and then I mix it up with breaststroke. Okay, you do 20 laps continuously. Okay, that's one set. Jump out, go to the hot tub, go to the sauna, chill out for a few minutes. You go back to the pool, you do it in another set of 20 continuous laps. That's a thousand meters in one session. That will take you about, yeah, about 45 minutes to an hour to complete. And that's, that's good enough, okay? So, yeah. I'm going to make a video about running versus swimming, so just stay tuned for that. But uh, what you're doing so far is, is pretty good. Just keep it up. If you're too tired, I don't know, that's a good sign, <laughs> I guess. Maybe you're pushing yourself too hard in your stroke. I can't tell. There's so many factors. So yeah, just, just keep it up. Keep the routine up. Two sets of 500. That's really good, actually. What's your diet protocol? What do you eat before and after sessions and the whole day? Thanks. Um, Okay, I can make a whole video on this topic or a whole series. Uh, let me break it down very quickly. Okay, so before swimming, uh, I try not to eat anything. Okay, because I don't want food jumbling around in my stomach as I'm doing 20 laps of you know, continuous front crawl. That's the worst feeling. Same with running. Okay, I know some people, they eat a banana. Even a banana sometimes upsets my stomach. So if I want to drink something, I just drink water or like some juice, orange juice. Okay, some juice before the session. After the session, oh, okay. Now, after the session, I usually eat steak with salad and some vegetables like cucumber and balsamic vinegar on top of that. Uh, some brown rice. And uh, yeah, uh, for snacks, here's a, here's a good tip. Okay, snacks. I love, 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 love Doritos ketchup chips, okay? That, I have a really sweet tooth for that stuff, okay? That's my, okay, I'm trying to get rid of that out of my diet. So here's a tip, pro tip. If you're addicted to chips, especially at night when you watch TV and all that, uh, munch on uh, toast instead, okay? So what I do instead is I, I make uh, uh, toast with peanut butter and, uh, some almond butter is actually better for you. And uh, I get organic jam. It's organic. It's not the synthetic, but it's like organic. It's, you'll find it in the organic se section of your supermarket. Organic jam. And just whole wheat toast. Yeah. Whole wheat, whole grain, whatever healthy grain bread you can find at your supermarket. I get that. Toast it and I put peanut butter and uh, organic jam. That That's... is filling and satisfying as a bag of chips. I'm 77 years old, have attended swimming schools all year. I'm concerned on breaststrokes, so I won't mix up with freestyle. My problem is breathing. I get frustrated. I get really exhausted after 20 meters and have to stop. Okay, that's probably because of your technique, okay? If you're stopping because you're exhausted at trying to do like one or two laps, it's usually the technique. It's not to do with your health or stamina. I'm too old. No, you're not too old, okay? Don't don't make the excuse of being too old, okay? I, I know this. people come up with that. Swimming is technique. It's not based on your health, okay? Yeah, the, your health, if you've never ran before or you're not in shape, yeah, that can help. That can affect your performance. But if you, if you can breathe, you can swim. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's usually about like, 80 to 90 percent due to technique. I'm going to ask you to film your swimming first. Film your swimming, film yourself doing breaststroke uh, and then submit it to the Facebook group. Now here's the thing I, I'm going to predict. Uh, you're probably trying to incorporate a front crawl breath when you're trying to do breaststroke. 
Okay, so when you breathe in breaststroke versus front call, they're totally two different breathing techniques. Okay, so how I'm gonna break it down for you is kind of like when you breathe when you jog, it's totally different when you breathe when you sprint. If you if you can catch my drift, right? Just imagine yourself sprinting versus jogging, or walking. Sorry, sprinting versus walking. These are two different breathing patterns, as you can tell. All right. So uh, film your swimming. Let me take a look at it in the Facebook group, and then we can go from there. Uh, side stroke. Uh, yeah. If for your case, if you're doing it for rescue operations, something technical. Side stroke is really uh, very good in that scenario. Why? Because it's one of those rare occasions where you can actually see your surroundings and swim at the same time. Now, when you do breaststroke, you can see your surroundings, but only for a fraction of a second because you have to put your head back in the water. Front crawl, you're going side to side, so you can't see anything in front of you. But when you're doing side stroke, you can see pretty much everything around you and keep going with your swimming. But you're not going to be as fast like doing side stroke compared to front crawl or even breaststroke, okay? It's kind of like a scanning uh, stroke, okay? It's just trying to see your surroundings. It's kind of like a, it's like kind of moving sideways while treading water. But uh, yeah, I like side stroke. Next, uh, do you have some advices for the ones who have the fear of deep sea or water? Uh, I mean to beat the fear. Uh, deep water, okay. So uh, everyone is afraid of the unknown, okay? If you go on a roller coaster for the first time, it's going to be scary. But if you work as a mechanic for the roller coaster and you have to ride that thing every day, then it's not scary, okay? Here's, here's, here's like another story. Like when I first joined a boxing gym, I was afraid to step foot in it, all right? I don't know why. Maybe because I was just afraid everyone in there, once I entered the room, was going to try to beat me up. Totally opposite, but that's going on in my head, <laughs> okay? So, yeah, when, once you're thinking about the water, and uh, worst case scenario, yeah, you can drown, but that's, that's not going to happen in, in an indoor pool. There are lifeguards there watching your back constantly, right? There, there are tools around you that will keep you safe in deep water. So, first of all, get a flotation belt, all right, and start practicing in the shallow water and get comfortable and just slowly work your way up, okay? No, you're not going to work in the deep water in the first day of your life when you start swimming, okay? That's like you trying to learn how to drive on the highway during rush hour on your first lesson. That doesn't happen. You slowly work your way up there, okay? So wear a flotation belt and practice you know, the basics in shallow water first. And those are all the questions. So uh, thank you for uh, submitting them. And if you have any more questions for me, uh, please leave them in the Facebook group, okay? In the Facebook group, yeah, I'll leave the link down below so you can join that. And uh, yeah, I'll try to make some more videos on swimming and all that and uh, stay tuned, okay? So thanks for watching. My name's Justin and bye.